All right, we're continuing on with lesson 2.5. Five. We're on part two. We finished the first three examples. Now we're looking at the fourth example. Um, with the fourth example, we actually use synthetic division to factor a polynomial completely um, when we can't do it by hand, when we can't factor with the other methods we've learned. Okay, so let's read through this. The factor theorem, suppose the remainder is zero when a polynomial is divided by x minus k. So we've got a polynomial, we divide by x minus k, and we get a quotient and a zero. Okay, we don't have a remainder. Um, that just means that x minus k is in fact a factor of the polynomial. Okay, what we've learned in the past, let's, let's give us one. If I have x squared minus 4. I can factor this into x plus 2, x minus 2. So these are both factors. If I take, let's take this one, x minus 2 is a factor, so I'm going to put a 2 in the box, and I'm going to divide 1x squared, 0x minus 4. I have a placeholder there, right? I've got a 1 here. 2 times 1 is 2, and add. 2 times 2 is 4, and add. I got a remainder of 0, right? So that's what I wanted to show you. I got a remainder of 0. If I started out with an x squared, and I divided by an x to the first power, my answer should be in um, an x to the first power. So this gives me a 1x squared plus 2. Not, sorry. A 1x plus 2. So that's my other factor. I can set this one equal to 0 and solve, so I get x equals negative 2 as one of my solutions, and x equals positive 2 is my other solution. Okay, so that's what this first paragraph is saying. Um, when I get a remainder of 0, that means that what I divide by is a factor. Okay, I can, that's what I've factored out. So the factor theorem says a polynomial f of x has a factor x minus k if and only if um, I evaluate that function of k and I get 0 for an answer. Now, here's the things we can do with this. The factor theorem can be used to solve a variety of problems. Given one factor of a polynomial, which is the x minus k, find the other factors. So if I'm given one thing in parentheses and a big long polynomial, I can find the other factors, all of them, okay? We'll look at example four. Given one zero of a polynomial, find the other zeros. So if you remember, a zero is when we take one of our factors, x minus k, we set that equal to zero and solve for it, x equals k. So this is one of the zeros and I want to find the other zeros. I'm going to find the other zeros by solving the other binomials. Whew. Given one solution, find the other solutions. These are the same. We call solutions zeros um, back and forth, back and forth. Solve, find the solution, find the zeros. Okay, so pay attention to each of these examples because there's just going to be one of each. All right, so factor this completely if this is a factor. So if, if that's a factor, they're telling us it is, I should be able to divide, use this as a divisor into my polynomial and get a remainder of zero. So x plus two equals zero, x equals negative two. That's what I'm gonna put in the box. All my coefficients, three x cubed, four x squared, 28 x, and 16. Drop the first one, um, multiply, add, multiply, add, and multiply. Ooh. Seems to me that I haven't, oh, there we go. Multiply and add. See, I didn't get a remainder of zero. I knew that I had done something wrong. So, 
This means that if I start with a cube, I divided by a first power, my answer is 3x squared minus 10x minus 8 and x plus 2. This polynomial factored into those two. But it wants me to factor completely, so I need to take this trinomial and factor it again. I don't see an easy way to do that, so I'm going to try um, our a times c. So 3 times negative 8 is negative 24. That breaks into two numbers that add to negative 10. Um, how about 2 times 12, where 12 is negative? If I add those together, I get a negative 10. So let's factor by grouping. 3x squared plus 2x minus 12x minus 8. Group the first two and the second two. I factor out my greatest common factor, which is an x. And I get a 3x plus 2. And it looks like a 4, a negative 4. And I get 3x plus 2. Factor those, 3x plus 2 and x minus 4 and x plus 2. I have now factored. All right, factor the polynomial completely that had given that x minus 4 is a factor. So set this equal to 0 and x equals 4. That's what goes in this box. Coefficients are 1, negative 6, 5, and 12. Drop the first one and multiply and add. Multiply, add, multiply, and add. We should always get a 0 there. So my polynomial is now in two pieces. I have x squared minus 2x minus 3 and x minus 4. I could multiply these two back and get this as a polynomial. But now I'm going to factor the um, trinomial. a times c is negative 3, um, b is negative 2. So 1 times, th one times negative 3 does add to negative 2. So I'm going to factor by grouping. Plus x minus 3x minus 3. Group the first two and the last two. Factor out an x. Factor out a negative 3. I get x plus 1, x minus 3, x minus 4. We did it. I could multiply all of those binomials together and get the beginning um, quadnomial, fornomial, foregone. Um, I could get that back. Okay, this is our last example of this kind. Um, it's the same x minus 4 as a factor. So x equals 4 is what I'm dividing by. 1, negative 1, negative 22, and 40. Drop the first one, multiply, and add. Multiply, add, multiply, add. So I have x squared plus 3x minus 10. Here's my solution so far. Now I need two things that multiply to negative 10 and add to 3. Ooh. Um, negative 2 times 5 works. x squared minus 2x plus 5x minus 10. Factor by grouping. 5x minus 2. So I have an x minus 2, an x plus 5, and an x minus 4. I can multiply those binomials back to get the original polynomial. Okay, that was example four. Moving on to example five. Um, it says one zero of that polynomial is x equals three. What is another zero? Well, I need to break that polynomial down to find out all the zeros. But I do know when x equals three, I can divide 
and hopefully get a polynomial that is factorable. Let's write down our coefficients. Do you see why um, this is so important? This is so much easier than long division. So multiply, add, multiply, add, multiply, add. So x minus 3 is one of the factors. We want the other ones. So I need to factor further x squared plus x minus 20. So two things that multiply to negative 20 and add to 1. Um, 4 and 5, if I have a negative 4 times 5, I add those to get a 1. Uh, minus 4x. You may be skipping some steps as you go, which is fine if you get it. Oops. I factor out an x and a 5. So it looks like my factors are x minus 4, x plus 5, and x minus 3. So my solutions, or my zeros, are 4, negative 5, and 3. So I've got a 4, a negative 5, and a 3. So that gives me A. Cool. So that was our big example of when we're given a 0, finding the other zeros. All right, I'm using a polynom polynomial model. Um, let's work through this one. It's sort of an obscure stretch to come up with a real world problem to use this material, but we can still work through the math because we need to practice. The profit P in millions of dollars for a shoe manufacturer can be modeled by this equation, where X is the number of shoes produced in millions. The company now produces one million shoes and makes a profit of $25 million. So one million shoes X is the number of shoes, um, profit of $25 million, but would like to cut back production. What lesser number of shoes could the company produce and still make the same profit? So we have a profit of $25 million, and we know we can produce 1 million shoes and make a profit. So we know that X is going to equal 1 million as one of the solutions. And I've talked about it a few times, but here I've got a third power so th there should be three solutions to this equation. I know that one of them is x equals 1. Um, we need to find the other two. So I can use division to reduce my equation to make it more manageable to actually factor it and find the solutions. So let's do that. I know that 25 million um, is my profit write down the rest of the equation, um, solve it for zero, because that's how we, we work these things. I'm going to move the, 20, the negative 21 to the left. Oops, that should be cubed. And this to the left. So plus 21x cubed minus 46x. Those cancel. I'm left with zero. So 21x cubed, 0x squared minus 46x plus 25 equals 0. I know that this is one of my solutions, so let's do some, some division to reduce, my, um, to reduce my power, to reduce my degree to a second degree equation. So 1 goes in the box. We write down all the coefficients, and we do some math. So 1 times 21 is 21, add. 1 times 21 is 21, add. 1 times 25, negative 25, is 0. So I'm left with, I've got x minus 1 for one of the factors, then 21x squared plus 21x minus 25. Um, I can't factor that, so I'm going to go to a new slide and use the quadratic formula. So 
so far I'm at x minus 1, 21x squared, plus 21x minus 25 equals 0. So I've got a, b, and c. So negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2a. Pause. Crunching some numbers on my calculator. Okay, so I'm just going to do the numbers. Negative 21 plus the square root of 2541. Divide by 42 is 0.724. And then I've got negative 21 minus the square root of 2541. Divide by 42 is negative 1.700. Oh, negative 1 is irrelevant, so the positive 1 is my only answer. Um, remember, this is millions, so that's 724,000 shoes will also keep us profitable. So here's some guided practice. That's just a practice, right? Um, we need to practice to make sure... Um, we know how to do things, so find the other zeros. If we know that um, the function evaluated at negative 2 gives us a 0, then we know that x plus 2 is one of the factors. So I can do synthetic division to reduce my degree to a squared and actually factor it. I need a new page, though. So I'm going to go ahead and write this down on a new page and do some synthetic division and come up with a solution. So we know f evaluated at negative 2 gives us a 0, gives us a solution. My function is given. So I need to do some division to, um, to reduce my degree to a second degree so I can actually factor it. So let's do that. So negative 2 goes in the box. All of my coefficients are here. Multiply, add, multiply, add, multiply, add. So if I start with a cube, I end with a square. So x squared plus 0, x minus 9. Okay, that's, I factored it so far. I don't need the 0x there, so I've got x squared minus 9. Um, that right there is the difference of perfect squares, so that should be easy for us to factor. So those are all my factors, which mean my zeros are x equals negative 3, x equals 3, and x equals negative 2. Those are all of my solutions, or my zeros. The next problem on the guided practice was f of x equals x cubed plus 8x squared, plus 5x minus 14, and, um, oh, it's the same thing, sorry, f of negative 2 equals 0. So that's one of my solutions. I'm going to go ahead and do division with that one to reduce the degree of my equation so I can factor it. So my coefficients are 1, 8, 5, and negative 14. Drop down the 1, multiply, and add multiply and add, multiply and add. So I'm left with x squared plus 6x minus 7 times x plus 2. I can factor that trinomial. a times c is, sorry, a times c is negative 7. So I need two things that multiply to negative 7 and add to 6. Um, negative 1 times, <laughs> Negative 1 times 7 is negative 7. I add those, I get 6. So let's factor by grouping. We've done this so many times. I hope it's getting easier. Okay, first two, last two. Factor out your greatest common factor. And then a 7. So I have x minus 1, x plus 7. Don't forget the x plus 2. 
that's everything factored. So if I find the zeros, I set each one of those binomials equal to zero and solve for x. x equals 1, x equals negative 7, x equals negative 2. Sweet. What if, in example 6, um, how does the answer change if the profit for the shoe manufacturer is modeled by this? Um, we're still going to have 25 equal negative 15x cubed plus 40x. And um, I still assume that one of my solutions is a million shoes. So I'm going to do the same work. Okay, um, I'm not going to do another example for this because we've just done a bunch of them. If you want to work through it, you're going to get about 900,000 shoes. All right, like I've told you guys in the past, our daily homework quiz, um, that's where work these problems out. You need another one to, um, to practice. It's a great time to practice. So here, this would be doing long division, right? And here it says to use synthetic division. Linear ones, when we're dividing by a linear equation, we can always use synthetic. When we have something bigger than that, um, we have to do long division. And then um, we're given one zero, so go ahead and do um, synthetic division to find the two other factors to solve to find the zeros. And then another problem. Cool? Nice work.